You're listening to Behind the Shield, giving you 15 minutes of inspiration, triumphs, and more with the Salvation Army. This is Captain Ken Chapman again, the area commander of the Salvation Army of Orange and Osceola Counties, with a podcast today that gives you more information probably than you even want to know about the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army, our mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ through serving suffering humanity. We love inclusively and we serve without discrimination. And in this great big central Florida area that we serve, there are amazing donors and funders and we're so grateful for each one of you. And today I'm going to talk about another aspect of the Salvation Army you probably don't know anything about, and it is what we call the Salvation Army Women's Auxiliary. And with me is the president of that Women's Auxiliary, Toby Moyle, who has been serving for several years. And Toby, tell us a little bit about you before we get into the auxiliary. Who Who is Toby Moyle? Thank you. Well, thank you, Captain Ken. First of all, thrilled to be on the show and excited to talk about the Women's Auxiliary. So, my background is in corporate America, and corporate banking specifically, and a few years ago I actually left that corporate career and started my own little small consulting business. I live here and work here in Central Florida and kind of do my own small company, small business, and worked in my whole life. I've worked with people all across the country, specifically the Southeast, but my community has always been near and dear to my heart and giving back. And so as to, as you mentioned a few years ago, I, I learned myself what the Women's Auxiliary was. I did not know. And so I'm excited to talk a little bit today about exactly who and what and you know how people can get involved if they'd like to. The purpose of the Women's Auxiliary. So we have what we call support organizations that help the Salvation Army accomplish our mission. The top organization would be the advisory board, Mm -hmm. a group of men and women and professionals, of which you serve on, who give us advice and kind of guide us and connect us. And then there's the women's auxiliary, and then there's also another one called Echelon for younger people. But the women's auxiliary uh, uh, traditionally in the Salvation Army have been amazing supporters. My last appointment was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we had two women's auxiliaries, because that was a large command, that had uh, incredible sway and influence. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing is, here's the deal. Here's the real deal. You, you want to have good people on your advisory board. But the women are the ones yeah. that make it really happen because yeah. the pillow talk that happens yeah. and, yeah. and uh, you know, especially when you uh, talk about the women and children shelter, which right. the women's auxiliary tends to focus on, you bring a lot of resources to the, com- to, to the Army. So mm-hmm. talk, talk about your yeah. involvement in that. So I think you're right. Women, not to make it a man or woman thing, but as a woman and as someone who's led men and women and during my career, there are just there are differences and I think women are natural connectors like you mentioned you know women are great at building community so it's just a natural fit having the women's auxiliary as a defined group that is specifically there to help with fundraising efforts to be that outreach into the community to have fun as well to get together and amongst our group to really support each other it's yeah, so, really wonderful so it's a lot more than fundraising uh, about connections and uh, relating That's relationships right. for right. instance with the women and children's shelter you've done things like taco tuesdays uh, happy meals from yeah. mcdonald's and uh, birthday parties and things that bring a little bit more dignity and maybe even what we would even say normalcy to their life right. because these kids and these mothers are traumatized that's exactly right it's it's what women do best really you know and it allows us to really be ourselves and if you're someone that really cares and likes to do things in their school system or maybe you don't even have like myself I don't have children of my own so to be able to give back to to children that are maybe in a tough situation to your point that are right now currently living in the women and children center more helping and going out and, and talking to people in the community it's it's really heartwarming at minimum and at maximum it makes you feel like you're really making a difference you know right, in someone's right. life I mean we all have had those memories from when you're young and it could be one person that said one thing and so being a part and being active with the women's auxiliary here with the Salvation Army it gives you that opportunity because right how else would you do it at least that's my point I've always wanted to make a bigger difference but 
I didn't have the mechanism I'd be able to really help. And so by being a part of the Women's Auxiliary, we can plug you in as little or as much as you would like exactly. to be. Exactly. And that's what's so beautiful is that you don't have to be wealthy to do right. this. You don't have to be well connected. That's right. You just have to care. That's right. I remember a teacher that I had in high school that looked at me and said, you have a lot of good in you. Mm. And I expect big things from you. That that had a lot Chain, yeah. of, of influence on my life. And then there was a That's Salvation right. Army officer who's very dear to me right now. When I was 15 years old at a territorial youth institute, I was 15. She sent me a note during the middle of the week saying how much I influenced uh, people around me and, and the good that she saw in me. And I still have that letter yeah. today. And it helped me to become yeah. who I am today. Yeah. So I've seen Women's Auxiliary members in the shelter, putting yes. their arms around yeah. a mother yes. who's crying <clears throat> or a child who needs it. But when you give people dignity, mm-hmm. they they perform better as human beings. That's right. And a lot of people come to our doors completely broken. And so you don't have to be talented. You don't have yeah. to be wealthy. You don't have to be well-connected. You just need to have a heart that beats for others. Yeah. And I see that a lot in the women's auxiliary. Yeah. I think you see that, to your point, you're, I 100% agree. And I think you see that a lot in the community. You're listening to this and you were like yes I agree with everything that Toby and Captain Ken are you know saying I would really encourage you to reach out to talk with us here at the Orlando Command at Salvation Army and, and just reach out reach out to me directly I'd love to have a conversation about and by the how way you can, you can do that by Salvation Army Orlando dot org there you online. go perfect and we have a Salvation Army Orlando app that yep. you could go to um, so we serve Orange and Osceola counties and Osceola County is beginning to grow, and our services out there are really exploding. Some great plans mm-hmm. are made for the future mm-hmm. for that. But what I want to point out, as you keep going back to, we have a built-in group of people who yeah. are in need of loving That's and right. caring right. and, and being made to feel that they matter. Yeah. And that is what I think is the strongest strength mm-hmm. or attribute or characteristic of the women's auxiliary yes is just caring for other people yes and you know when you're working and helping with the women's auxiliary that you're truly doing the most good which you'll hear a lot if you come and, and work with us at the salvation army but doing the most good because they know how to help put your resources to good use i can tell you as someone who does not work for the salvation army right as a volunteer i feel 110 percent great about every penny that i've ever given to the salvation army every minute of my time that i've donated through the salvation army because i know that those resources are going to the best and highest use possible and they're not being wasted and they're not being wasted. literally 80 82 cents of every dollar given goes to to direct services and not many nonprofits can say that and doing the most good is our our slogan the red shield is our brand that doesn't mean we're doing better than any other nonprofit. Yeah. What it says is we're doing the most good with what resources you entrust to us, yeah, whether that be point. funds or in kind or your time yep. and talent, yep. uh, that we do the best we can. And it's not that we're doing better than anyone else. Yep. And we do truly make an effort to make sure that we are good stewards of what people give to us. And you've seen that firsthand oh, in, ab- in your Absolutely. In and your I'll brag I'll brag on um on you, Captain Ken, and your wife, uh Captain Jesse, who leads our women's auxiliary efforts. I, I've never seen and it's inspiring every time that I'm around both of you. Um, it's very inspiring to see what you've just dedicated your whole lives to helping people. Well, we so. had uh, interesting careers before we were Salvation Army officers. We're both fourth generation Salvationists born into the Salvation Army Church. And by the way, not only are we the area commanders, but we're also the what they call core officers, which is the pastors of the 200 member Salvation Army Church. So it's a real daunting appointment when you have to do both sides yeah. of that, but we equally love it. And uh, we had career. She was HR director for the largest school system mm-hmm. in Georgia. I had my own company for 20 years, Creative Events International, produced the closing ceremonies for the Olympics in, pa- in Barcelona, Spain, Super and great. also in Atlanta, the opening and closing in Paralympics. And I did a lot of live shows for TV. I was, you know, Aretha Franklin, Liza Minnelli, people like that that I worked with. And the Lord called us 16 yep. years ago into full time service. We gave up everything we had and moved to Jackson, Mississippi, 
uh, to build the mission of the Army there. And 16 years later, I can tell you that when you find the sweet spot of what God has mm-hmm. created you to do, because mm-hmm. all those crazy things we did before prepared us for this That's moment. Right. That's right. When you find that sweet spot, uh, everything, even the bad days, are good. Yeah. And we have been <clears throat> so incredibly blessed. Thank you for the kind words you said about us. But we are the ones that are the most blessed because we've been surrounded by people like you and other people in our advisory board and women's auxiliary. And we're so grateful that we've had the honor to work alongside of people like you. Now, we have a lot of work to do. Yes, absolutely. Um, yep. We have a year ahead of us. We yep. retire in June of 2025. And we got a lot of work to do. We have a men's shelter that mm-hmm. we have to get modernized and redone that's falling apart right now, which is seven and a half million dollars. We just finished the women and children's yep. shelter, and it beautiful. is beautiful, beautiful. wonderful. Yep. And the women's beautiful. auxiliary helps us do that. Yes, um, you help us in so many different ways. Talk about some of the ways that you have seen your people in the women's auxiliary make the Salvation Army better? Yeah, so um, there's many things throughout the year. There's always different projects. There's always different campaigns. We mentioned the Red Kettle program. That's around Christmas time, of course, as ho- hopefully everyone uh, recognizes the Red Kettles that are outside of our favorite uh, retail and establishments. And by the way, we had the such. world's largest Red Kettle Red right, right here in Orlando, that's right? right. <laughs> yep, so hopefully, as uh, Captain Ken shared with the website and the app, I encourage everyone to go on, and maybe that's a first little uh, first step if if maybe you're – I'm kind of interested, but you don't know how maybe you'd fit in. I would encourage you to just go on, follow us on Facebook, and just kind of watch some of the things that are going on. But we do any kind of the any kind of campaigns, any of the projects that are going on. The Women's Auxiliary is there to help out. It could be volunteering, it could be spending time, it could be at the Women and Children's Center that we're going to be doing some great projects there in the center with the children. So it might be we'll do some reading times, working on homework, do some fun game evenings. We go out and do some outreach into the community whenever there's an event. I really think of the, the women as ambassadors as well. It could be just individual ambassadors to talk with somebody that you know that you think might be able to get involved with the Salvation Army. Or maybe it's in a more formal sense at a function that the Salvation Army is hosting or involved in. And they'll, we'll ask some of the women's auxiliary members to come and, and be supportive and show up. Or right around this time, we have the uh, National Donut Day, and that's a whole great uh, campaign as well. And so the women's auxiliary will be there as donut lassies. And that's just a really a fun, great way that and we can know, share. Speaking of that, women have a really big role in the history of the Salvation Army. Yes, I've learned that. Uh, as a matter of fact, our founder and uh, first general, William Booth, said this quote, some of my best men are women. Yep. I think I gave you a little yes, magnet that said that. that. Yep. And the first wo- uh, woman ordained in ministry pretty much happened yep. in the Salvation <clears throat> Army. We ordain women as well as men, and they have equal status and leadership mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. opportunities. And women were the first to see the resurrected Christ and the, the first evangelist. And women were on the front lines of the First World War mm-hmm. with uh, the, the, the first time women had ever been allowed on the front lines of war. And so the Doughboys, they were mm-hmm. aptly called, um, they, they found this pastry, the, the, the lassies, the donut lassies, and they were in you know, combat uniforms as yeah. well. And they found this pastry in France that was you know, kind of dough mm-hmm. and you kind of flattened it out and fried it and rolled it in sugar or cinnamon. Yep. And so they would provide that for, and they would change the socks of the of the doughboys when they were coming back from the front lines or on their way to the front lines. And so it got really difficult to carry a stack of those with all your weapons and your gear. Yep. So they took a bullet casing and they cut a hole in it and therefore the donut hole. That's and super the, neat. Yeah, and they were able to hold it between their thumb and forefinger and take more. more. So the Salvation Army popularized the donut, the donut in America. Yep. And then we did the same th- kind of thing in World War II. So National yes. Donut Day is a big day for us, yes. and we want to make people aware uh, every donut shop should be our biggest supporter, That's shouldn't right. they? That's right. I agree. Yes. And, it's and, a, and you, yeah. you've worn the, 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 the Donut, donut Lassie. Lassie's yes. Costume. There's all sorts of fun stuff um, that we've done. Yes, like you said, we, it's, a great, it's just a great connection point. We have a lot of fun. Hopefully it's hard to get that to come through probably in a podcast just talking about things, right, but right. I, I would tell you that we do a lot of good 
and we give back, but we're having a lot of fun. And just the women that you're around when you're a part of the Women's Auxiliary, they're just the fellow women that have such big hearts, is really inspiring and great to just, you, I've just made a whole new network of, of friends. So the Women's Auxiliary is, again, I want to reemphasize because people think, well, they yeah, expect me to be rich and all of this. No, yeah. no, no, no. We just need a heart to beat. That's right. That's and it right. gives you a sense of belonging when you're with a group of like-minded women who want to help people as well. I think we need that just in and of itself more than ever in a world where we're maybe not as connected, at least it feels anecdotally like these last few years. We're spread out. We're not going in offices like we used to, that camaraderie that we had that I think women really thrive on, by the way. Um, you know, that that's kind of lacking, I think, in a lot of our lives. And yeah, and since COVID, things, yes, the, world, the world changed. Just, it's just different. And so, I think yeah. it was Einstein that said uh, hun- almost 100 years ago, yes. um, the technology of the future will make us all blooming idiots. Mm-hmm. And I believe we become more disconnected. For sure. Even though we think we're a lot more connected, that face-to-face interaction, um, yeah. that conversational kind of relational uh, thing that we need to do as human beings, the women's auxiliary lends itself greatly to that. Agreed. And as humans, giving back it is as much for you and as much it makes you feel as good as it does the, the, for the person that you're helping, right? So if I could speak to a woman that's, that's listening if you've thought, I'd like to do more in my community, whatever that is. Now, don't even have a preconceived notion. I would just like to do more. I feel like I have a little time maybe, or maybe you're really busy, but I feel like I could do something to help just to give back a little bit more. That's the other thing I would say is that the the Salvation Army is very smart in that they will take anything you can do to help and make the most of it. Right. So we, if it's a we recycle 30 minutes everything. of it, yeah, and then that too. Yeah, I mean, anything. It's just like, you know, there's not a bunch of hoops that you have to jump through and, and they're just like, come down and they will put you to work to help with something. So if you're just a really quiet person, maybe, and I mentioned reading a minute ago because we're going to start some, some great little reading programs with some of the children and you like to read and you're like, I'm not a social butterfly. Toby, I would never get on this kind of podcast thing. This whole thing, you know, this is not my bag. I don't like any of this. We would love to have you. Maybe you could come and read a children's book to some of the some of the children in the Women and Children's Center. We would and love w- that. One of the things that was my favorite thing that you do um, is that Easter, there were Easter baskets prepared yeah. for the, the children. Yeah. And also at Christmas you do stockings. Sock, and, of yep. course, we get them all adopted through the angel tree. Absolutely. And the Women's Auxiliary is very crucial in the success of the angel tree. Creativity. We love women out there that are creative. We need that, right? We need your, your heart. We need your, your mind, your ideas. Yes. Um, that's the other thing about the Women's Auxiliary, specifically here in Central Florida, is because we're really just started. We, there's so much more to do, right? And there's so many ideas that we have. But do not think that we're, we already have it all laid out and these are the five things that we do and that's all we do. Quite the opposite. If you came and started uh, plugging into our group and you had a, an idea and said, why don't we do this? I promise you that Captain Ken and Captain Jesse would be happy to listen to so your idea. A- very fluid yes, organization. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we've implemented those things that, you know, people had ideas. Why don't we do a bingo night? Sure, let's do it, right? And, like, and it's, we have a thousand, I mean, uh, 319 seniors who live on our campus. Yep. So there's plenty of opportunity there, too. Whatever. And, but yep. it's for all ages. For eight, all ages. 18 and up yep. is for women's auxiliary. Yep. It's for anyone who wants to. To just literally reach out your That's hand right. to help somebody yep. with no expectations. That's right. No requirements for, you know, paying money or anything like that. So yep. we just yesterday got uh, 1,500 bears delivered to us where we have women throughout the community who dress those bears, who make clothes for those bears that we give away at our angel tree yes. every December. And that, to me is an amazing act of love. No, oh my goodness. And Let that's just, a really good example of women's yes, auxiliary. thank you for bringing up Angel Tree. I mean, that's another huge at the end of the whole fourth quarter of the year, really, is something that we really are, are very involved with the Angel Tree uh, campaign and program. And so the women's auxiliary, yes, will be there, and we're putting the, the baskets together or the bags together with all the toys that people have uh, so kindly bought and donated for the angels, trees for the angels that are going to be receiving those gifts. And so... And we have a blast doing that and listening to this. And in the future, I would love for you to come up and talk to me about how you this you know resonated with you. There is nothing that will make you feel better than 
when you have someone pull up in their car and you go out and you bring them the and gifts for their them angel face kids. To yeah, face. and get to give yeah. them those gifts. It's it's uh, it's life changing for you for them, and it's done on such a large scale. It's very impressive. I've learned a lot. I've never shared this with you about how you organize big functions and, and big endeavors, right, with big goals, how you really just, you know, can call people to take action and really get things done that I'll stand back and say, I, I don't even know how you do it. I well, really don't. It's we're an army. very impressive. We're yeah. an army and we act like an army yep. and we, we uh, process and operate completely very like impressive. an army. But I, I will tell you, I have to give all the real credit to the angel tree and how successful that is to my wife, yes. uh, Captain Jesse yes, Chapman. But she runs it. She and really it's does. a tight ship. And, you know, when you think about organizing and getting together 5,000 bags of clothing Each and Each one of those bags toys. having tons of things. Yes. I mean, it's not, it's 5,000 to your point. And, and somebody can insane. come up, maybe on that day of distribution, there's a problem. Yep. And you tell her the name. She can tell you out of 5,000 children. Yep. She can tell you, oh, I know that family. I know their situation. Let me handle this. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it, it boggles my mind. 31 years I've been married to her, and it still surprises yeah, me. Yeah, it's very impressive. And that's when you know that um, that it's ordained. You you can tell that how involved God is in that yes, program yeah, yeah. because to, to pull that off, it not taking nothing away from Captain Jesse, to your point, she's very skillful, and it's very impressive. But to see it, it all come together each year is – it's boggling, really. Well, and it's, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, Channel 6, yes. Getting Result, News yep. 6. Um, great job. They give so much coverage for us. They broadcast the day of uh, live, yep. the day of distribution, the uh, calling bank that we have on Giving Tuesday, the kickoff of the Angel Tree. They do so many things, and they make that very successful. And in Central Florida, in six Christmases we've done, this will be our seventh coming up, we have never had to buy any clothes or toys because... Everything we ask for is delivered and donated. People sacrifice their Christmases yeah. for their families to help people who are in need. Yeah. And I think it brings a lot of hope to Central Florida. I so agree. And you've seen it yeah. when you've connected with these families, what it does for a yeah. mother yeah. who otherwise would not be able to provide for their children. I'm telling you, if you want to have a renewed faith in <laughs> humanity, truly, please, yes. please get, come down and spend spend a little time with us one afternoon. And I'll, I'll promise so you, you'll be uh, There excited. are numerous opportunities. Yes. We have uh, the Women and Children's Shelter. We have the Men's and Veterans Shelter. 319 elderly and disabled live in the William and Catherine Booth Towers yep. for an average of about $234 a month, all inclusive. Yeah, very impressive. We have two, 100, between 100 and 200 men and women that show up at 3.30 every day for our soup line. You don't have to show an in, uh, uh, ID or anything. Just say, I'm hungry, and we feed you. We have 100 at-risk youth that come from the neighborhood from disadvantaged and broken homes. They get four meals a, a week, yeah. hot meals that they might not have gotten at home, life skills, character building. They get free sports lessons and free music lessons. Yes. And then when there's a disaster, we're the first in and yeah. the last out. So there are so many things so going many. on and so many ways to give. Yeah. You can only be limited because you don't want to leave your home and do anything for anybody else. That's right. That's right. And and I would tell you, even if you were wanted to get involved and you couldn't leave your home, we could help find ways that you could help us out. Honest, honestly, you could make a phone call. You could make an introduction. You know what? You could share this podcast with someone that you think would have the That's time right. or the heart that would be great i think just socializing the message um is a huge value huge hugely beneficial and we never ever have enough toiletry kits oh yeah uh, because yeah. we distribute on the street twice a week as mm -hmm. well yeah. as our shelters and so people when we try we have to travel a lot and when we go to hotels we take the little uh, That's right. the shampoos soap and soaps yep. and we yep. bring them back for our toiletry kits yes. and you could do that yes. uh, and send them to the, the Salvation Army. You could assemble them at home. So Anything. lots of, yeah. Because of the work that the Salvation Army does, they understand that people can get involved and, and that entry point of how you get involved is uh, might be look different or feel different for each person. I, I believe when you do something and your heart beats faster, 
that's what God programmed you for. Thank you. Amen. And yeah, so I find agree. what that is. Yeah. And we will find an outlet for you. That's I promise right. you yes. there will be an outlet. Yes. So the point of this podcast today was to introduce this amazing leader, Toby Moyle, and this beautiful, wonderful woman who loves people and loves the mission of the Salvation Army. We're so very grateful oh, to you. Thank you. I'm grateful. And thank the people you. that you bring to our yeah. table. I'm so grateful for the people who are listening to this <clears throat> and people who don't even listen to what we're doing, but they contri- contribute to us. It oh, may be a $5 too. check, a $25 check, a $50,000 check. But we're grateful for all of those who do that. That's for true. WKMG and uh, Channel 6, News 6, Getting Results, how they give to us. And yes. uh, the American Adversaries Radio people who work with us to help promote our mission. These are things that we're so grateful for and yes. so blessed in Central Florida. Yeah. So if you are finding a need for an outlet to helping others today we're giving you great opportunity salvation army orlando.org or you can download our salvation army orlando app and that app also covers osceola county you could also if you're in osceola county you could go to salvation army osceola.org and find out what you need and contact us and we will be happy to talk to you and we will anybody who's interested in the women's auxiliary we will forward to toby and i promise you she'll get in touch come down and we'll uh, take you on a tour if you have you know 45 minutes one day we'll show you a little tour around the property there and uh, right off of i4 couldn't be any easier in central florida and so we do want people to know that we do this because of the love and grace and mercy Absolutely. of Jesus. But we don't force Jesus on anybody. Yeah. We'll tell the yeah. story. But if they don't accept Jesus, yeah. we still shelter food, welcome whatever. Welcome everybody. And welcome yeah. anybody to help. Sure. So we're all, all inclusive, inclusive and um, very diverse. Indeed, we're in 139 countries around the world. We've been in existence for 158 years. Amazing. And the Salvation Army has served uh, Orlando since 1920. That's amazing. So 104 years. Yeah, that's and so we're going nowhere. We're just going to go up. And with the help of the Women's Auxiliary, our advisory organizations, and other people who help us, and people like you. Yeah. We appreciate who you are. Jesus said in Matthew, if you give a cup of cold water in my name, it's the same as you gave it to me. Mm. And we give you many, many opportunities to do that and more in the Salvation Army. So come join us. Thank you you for your leadership, Toby, and for your passionate heart. Salvation Army Orlando.org, Salvation Army Osceola.org, and you can download the Salvation Army Orlando app. Toby Moyle, oh, president of the Women's Auxiliary, we love you and we thank you for thank who you, you love are. You guys Contact us. Let us know. Do you want to get involved with our Salvation Army Women's Auxiliary? God bless you today in all that you do. Behind the Shield is powered by News 6, United Way, City of Orlando, and Orange County.